In this video I will be showing you how to develop 16mm film in a Lomo tank and I will go over in great detail all the chemistry and techniques that I use. So the first thing you'll have to do is get your film into the Lomo tank and to do this you'll need to assemble it correctly. Now this can take 100 feet but unfortunately it has to be split up into two 50 foot lengths. Uh, you have these two spirals here, so I only ever develop 50 feet at a time on one spiral, so you need to assemble the spiral and to do that you need to have this black adapter piece which comes with your tank and these tanks are they're not cheap, they're about, you'll be having to pay in total about £100 to have them brought over from uh, Russia. Uh, you don't get them in this country very much and they are very very old as well, these are not made anymore. And the reason I chose this over a Morse tank, like the one that could take 100 feet at once which spiral the film back and forward, is just simply because you can get nicer results with these. Uh, there is a 100 foot version but it's extremely rare, very hard to find. Uh, that's basically a 100 foot spiral, a single one. And if I had one of those I'd get myself a 35mm movie camera too. But yeah, you just assemble it like that. And that is how I'd be developing. The only problem with these tanks is they're a pain in the back side to get loaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how how to do it in the daylight, uh, you'd obviously do this with your exposed film in complete darkness and that is quite difficult to do. I've managed to do it without error but uh, once I was uh, developing film and I had splices in it, I spliced it in darkness and the splices made it jump the spirals and then that resulted in uh, some areas being undeveloped. Uh, so you can put perforations up or down, it doesn't really matter on uh, your 16mm film because if it's standard 16 you've got a space at the side anyway that's not used but if you're using Super 16 film from a Super 16 camera you want to load it perforations down uh, so that you don't ruin part of your image. So you can put it in either way, what I do is I just usually uh, fold the end over like this and I can and you can put it in this way and then you have your reel in your other hand like this and then you hold it and you just hold it down nice and nice and flat and while you've got all that held down to try and get the top on the spiral uh, I'll zoom out a bit and show you that whole process So you want to have it just like this and then using your other hand, all of this is in complete darkness remember, you have to put the top on. Now in complete darkness what I do is I put my finger through this and try and feel for the for the hole uh, where, the, where this screw piece goes through and then you can just screw that in like this. Then you start twirling this like that now you can see all your film is going on and this is how I'm holding the reel you want the film to be going flat uh, towards the reel like this so the film's flat and then it's naturally uh, twisting to vertical like this then you just keep on doing that until you reach the end of the film Uh, and then when I'm doing this in complete darkness, uh, to make sure I've got the angle right, I'm just listening to the sound. So if you're holding the reel too low, you'll maybe hear it scraping off the spiral. So you've just got to use your senses as much as you can. And then once it's loaded like that, you simply just get the other half of the tank. And then that goes in there like that. And you'd put the lid on 
and then just uh, turn it to the closed position to lock it and then you're ready to come out into the light. The film I'll be developing today is, it's not 320T by the way, there's actually about, uh, I think there's about 10 or 15 feet of EXR50D inside here, uh, which was just a short end of a reel that I'd finished, so I'll just be developing that small amount, so it's not going to fill up the reel very much at all. So with the film loaded in, I'll briefly go over what chemicals you need. You'll need at least 1.2 litres of everything because one litre isn't going to quite cover the spool inside the tank. So you'll need a developer, you'll need bleach, you'll need fix, and you'll need stop bath and stabiliser. Now, in my previous video on how to, how to make those, uh, I, I stated that you're to use like a certain amount of each chemical, and as it turns out these chemicals were meant to be anhydrous I think it was a sodium bromide that was meant to be anhydrous and if you use non-anhydrous it means you have to use slightly more of the non-anhydrous stuff compared to the anhydrous stuff so maybe add an extra couple of grams or whatever of uh, the chemical that it was meant to be but I wouldn't worry about it too much really because I used the non-anhydrous stuff as stated in the recipe and the stuff just worked just fine uh, I never had any problems so the bleach and fixer are, are the ones that I made up in the other video on my channel uh, I'll put a link to that in the description the stop bath is just I'm sure it's 20 grams of uh, citric acid to one litre of water and the stabiliser uh, I bought that from Nick and Trick photo services that, that was actually part of a C41 kit but I've ordered more and same with the developer, that's RA4 developer which came from NT Photo Works so you just search that in Google and uh, you'll get uh, to the page to buy it it's like £5 for a litre of developer and I'll show you just now I've actually got some here it just comes in two bottles like that, you mix those together as per the instructions and then you have a litre of de developer to work with and I'll probably be using quite a few of these to develop all the film from the epic camp trip so there will pro probably be like maybe 1600 feet worth of film for me to develop and I reckon you could do 200 feet per litre of developer uh, so I don't know how that's going to go I'm, I'm not decided yet, I might just send it all off to London to be developed, Cinelab London. But the first thing you want to do anyway is warm up all your chemicals and I'm just using this water bath here. That's one of those sous vide things and I've just set the temperature at 40 degrees just now to warm everything up but uh, you can develop at 38 degrees, that's the recommended temperature, 38 degrees Celsius. Although you can experiment with other temperatures, I think the official temperature for the ECN2 process is actually 40 degrees Celsius for 3 minutes. But um, I've been using 38 degrees Celsius for 3 minutes 15 seconds with brand new developer and that's worked just fine. Uh, so that's, that's okay. The only other chemicals that have to be at a different temperature are the bleach and the pre-bath for getting the REM jet off so these two have to be at 27 degrees Celsius so I just take them out the bath early before everything else is heated up and then place them in cold water if necessary to cool them down a bit and get them as close to 27 as I can uh, that's just per, as per Kodak's recommendations so I just follow those as much as I can so they two can come out and then once everything's heated up, I can start the developing process. Another thing you'll need is an accurate thermometer. Uh, I've just got this sort of kind with a long temperature probe on it, so I can stick it in the various solutions and see what temperatures uh, we're reading. So I want the developer to be at just a little bit over 38. I might even do 39 Celsius this time and see how that turns out because I don't have a water bath to put the Lomo tank in so 
what I've been doing is running hot water from the tap underneath the tank while the developing's been happening. Uh, but what I'm going to do this time is just try uh, the developer being like at maybe 39 Celsius. But it's a bit too cold just now, so I can't continue until that's at the right temperature. So in the official Kodak literature on the ECN2 process, the, the actual temperature is uh, 41.1 Celsius for the developer. But um, with these things, it's just a matter of experimenting. 38 has worked for me, but uh, the developer I'm using uh, is getting quite old. It's been uh, used for quite a lot of 60mm film and it's near the end of its life so I'm going to just up the temperature this time and develop for maybe close to four minutes because it is getting quite old uh, but really you just have to follow the instructions that come with your developer and uh, and do your own experimentation okay so step one of the process is to tackle the dreaded rem jet now uh, you want to at least get as much of it off in this stage as you can because you'll be removing last traces of it manually uh, just after fixing so to do that get your tank ready this hose make sure it's above the tank so uh, you don't have your solution coming out as you're pouring it in and what I like to do is just stick something in the end and now there doesn't seem to be anything in the entire household that fits in the end of this hose apart from a squeezy bulb thing so I'm going to put that in it uh, and that means that I can just leave it hanging like that so the first stage is to pour in the pre-bath and I've also got a video on how you make this stuff this is a proper stuff using Kodak's recommended formula so you just want to pour it in as quickly as you can, it's only meant to be in contact with the film for about 10 seconds so it's basically going in and then coming out again so we pour this in like this get all of it in just agitate it a little bit and it comes back out again. We just uh, flush it out like this, holding the tank up. Try not to spill any. Try and recover as much of it as you can. There we go, we've only lost about 10 millilitres, so just put this to the side once you're finished with it and then just dump in a whole load of warm water not too hot, maybe like about between 30 and about 30 degrees celsius roughly uh, and then you just dump all that in and then shake the tank The reason I'm pausing is because when you're shaking it, the solution starts, well, the water starts building up in there and going everywhere. So you just pause. And now you let that come out. Now, if there's 50 feet of film inside this, that would look absolutely black. It'd be like used engine oil coming out of it, that sort of colour. Uh, and you want to do, repeat this maybe two or three times until the water coming out turns clear and the reason I'm pouring it in a beaker is so I, I don't overflow the tank it's so I know how much I'm putting in So that's pretty much as good as we'll get. 
uh, now what you want to do is uh, try and get as much of the water out of it as you can otherwise you'll start diluting your developer because when the wheel inside here is wet it does hold quite a bit of water you just want to shake as much of that out as you can Next, get a stop bath ready because once your developing is finished you want to get the developer out the tank as fast as you can and get the stop bath in as fast as you can otherwise you'll get uneven results in the film so this is a stop bath going in here and I'm just putting it in a beaker so I can dump it into the tank as fast as possible so that's how I get really nice even results and I've got plenty of examples to show you because I've uh, done this process a few times before so I can just sit over there like that uh, put this bottle back in the water bath now we're ready to begin developing so you'll need to set a timer uh, when the developer is brand new I'd use just about um, 3 minutes or 3 minutes 15 seconds uh, those times work fine for me uh, but in this case I'm going to be doing it differently I'm probably going to be developing maybe four minutes because the developer's quite old okay in the background I've got my phone there to time the whole thing so what I'm going to do is get the developer now and as soon as I start pouring in the developer I will start the timer so the developer is going to be at about 41 celsius just now uh, but I'll verify that quickly. One other good thing to do is uh, get some warm water in the tank, just flush it through with uh, quite warm water or, or even what you could do is just rinse it, turn it upside down and rinse it under the tap to pre-warm it before you start the developing process because over the course of four minutes the whole thing's going to cool down so uh, I'm just going to get it like this and just have hot water running over it uh, or you could just pour the hot water in it because the hot water is going under the lid and going onto the film anyway so to me it's a bit pointless doing this but um, the idea is just to get nice and pre-warmed right so that should hopefully do it now and just uh, get that, as much of that water out as you can Right, so let's get developing. So, you want to pour in the developer as fast as you can without spilling it everywhere. So, I'm just going to start a timer now. I'll just add on a few seconds. So, you want to get in as quickly as you can uh, just to reduce the chances of uneven development. Now, agitate continuously for 15 seconds, turning it clockwise. Then you want to agitate for 5 seconds every 30 seconds. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just skip to the end of the whole process. So now as we're coming up to the end of the development process uh, I'd just like to say that nothing that I'm saying here is absolutely critical and has to be adhered to perfectly. Uh, the, the numbers on Kodak's data sheets are industry standards and they are what the labs must <coughs> adhere to if they want uh, the, the results to be of industry standard and absolutely perfect but uh, in a hobby context there's there is room for, for deviation from that, uh, you may get some colour shifts or whatever uh, but this is my first test of going over temperature so we'll just see how it turns out so now we're coming to the end of the developing time so put the hose in the developer bottle lift the tank up, let all the developer pour out uh, normally this developer would be clear or a light yellow colour but it's uh, badly contaminated with Remjet then dump in the stop bath
as fast as you can. And then just agitate it uh, for a little bit. Um, and it has to be in there for a minute. Now we're coming to the end of that minute, so I'm just going to dump this down the sink because I want to replace the stop bath anyway. Because um, it's getting a bit old, so I'll just let let this one go. That's just a weak solution of uh, citric acid anyway. Citric acid is normally used as a food flavouring. Normally, uh, the industry standard that Kodak recommends for a stop bath is it's to be made with sulfuric acid. And it's probably a weak solution, but even still, it's some nasty stuff. So, the next thing you want to do is wash. Uh, just wash the film, get some water going through it, uh, just to get all that stop bath off it. After you've washed the film, you can handle the film uh, now in normal light. Uh, I wouldn't do this in really bright conditions, but you can actually open the tank now. Uh, because for the rest of the stages, I like to have the tank open. So I can see exactly what I'm doing. So that's just me dumping that wash water out. Uh, so what I can do now is, now that the stop bath has been completed, uh, I can open up the tank and you can see the film inside. So that's all we've got in there, not very much at all. Uh, now I can just wash it like this. Now the stop bath is very important because <clears throat> I was having a problem where for some odd reason all my negatives were coming out bright red. Now that is because the developer which has been left on the film even after I washed it, because I wasn't using a stop bath, I was just washing with water after developing, there's still some developer left on the film, and that is reacting with the bleach, causing the film to turn red, and I was getting these negatives with rubbish contrast, uh, and they were just bright red. I'll show you some near the end actually, uh, but it wasn't nice. So. Here we go. I can't seem to see much pictures, much in the way of pictures on it just now, but that's because the emulsion's facing in. So the next task you want to do is bleach for three minutes. And that's why I like to have the tank open like this because I can see everything that I'm doing. I can also agitate it much better as well to get all the air bubbles out. So 
we'll just leave that for three minutes, just uh, the usual agitating every 30 seconds. This is just the first agitation here for uh, the first 15 seconds, so that'll do it just now. So that's uh, time just about up for the bleaching process, so it's time to put that back in its bottle and then wash thoroughly because if you don't, the bleach reacts with the fixer and causes weird spots on the film. So I'm just getting rid of all that bleach back into its bottle just now. Just trying to recover as much of that as I can. And my technique for washing is uh, just like this. I have the tank sitting at an angle and I just run water over the film. while turning it like this, uh, and I just dump it out. And basically you want to wash it thoroughly until there's no trace of that yellow colour anymore. And then wash it for a bit more after that. But the thing is, uh, I think this developer is almost totally dead. Uh, I can't see much in the way of pictures now. If your film's properly exposed, you can usually see actual images on it before you've even fixed it. So it might not have worked, but it's maybe too early to say. So once you've washed that thoroughly after bleaching it's time for fixing and you just fix for three minutes again. So we'll just start that now. I know it says three minutes thirty but uh, I could just uh, not fix it for as long. But um, three minutes in the fixer is usually adequate. So we'll just pour that in, cover the whole lot. Now this stuff does smell quite nasty, so uh, if smell is a problem you can always just do the fixing with the lid on the tank. But I'm in a well ventilated area just now, so that's not really a problem. It's because it's, um, I'm sure it's sodium thiosulfate and, uh, and sodium bromide, I can't remember the exact recipe, but it's whatever I've used in the video. and it's. Uh, it's a nasty smelling mixture. So that's the time just about up for the fixer. So we'll just pour that back into this bottle and wash the film thoroughly. And after the film's been washed thoroughly, that's when we remove the last traces of Remjet. Again, that's just done by lifting the tank up. Hmm, it's not very good. It's usually best to avoid dropping stuff. Right, so. Time to get all this washed. So now it's time to remove the last traces of Remjet and a really helpful tool with that as a film rewinder. So I've got one here and what we do is I get a reel, attach it here 
and then as I reel the film off the off the developing wheel, I just run it through a cloth. So I'll go and grab a cloth just now. So soak the cloth and then just put it to the side and then you want to try and find the end of your film and then get it to come off the tank reel. So there's actually a picture on the film uh, here but it's a bit well, it's a bit weak looking I would say. Uh, I think that developer is totally done. But anyway what you want to do is uh, just pass the film through the cloth uh, and get the last rem jet off because there is still some there. Uh, and I'm just uh, getting as much as I can off uh, this piece just before I put it onto the reel because because uh, if you have rem jet on the film and then it goes onto a reel uh, it transfers from the base to the emulsion and then you get uh, dull smears on your finished film. So yeah it's just a case of rubbing it through a cloth carefully until you don't get any black marks on the cloth and then you've just got to reel it up and then do that until you've done all the film. Okay, so once you've done that, uh, you want to put the film back onto the reel because you still need to stabilise it. Uh, and that's the final rinse to make sure that it actually dries properly and it helps preserve the image, things like that. Uh, so just reel it on, back on as you did before. And you want to get this last tail in as well because if you don't when you're agitating it it'll just start unraveling so that's that <laughs> one other thing uh, it's good to get the finest filter you can as well because I regularly filter my chemicals uh, all the chemicals except the developer because I don't like that sloshing around and getting oxidized but um, with all the other chemicals you can filter them and get all the dirt out of them. You get less spots in the film. Uh, so this is just the stabilizer bath. Just now. and we just put that in there for three minutes. And that's not temperature critical. That can be 27 to 38 Celsius. So we'll just have that in there for roughly three minutes, and that should do it for the stabilizer. Again, with your stabiliser, it's just uh, your, your usual agitating continuously for the first 15 seconds and then agitating for 5 seconds every 30 seconds. NT PhotoWorks also sells uh, the Kodak stabiliser, so uh, they sell them in these bottles really cheaply. Uh, it's very very cheap. I think it's about maybe two or three pounds per bottle. So it's ten millilitres of stabiliser plus nine hundred millilitres, nine hundred and ninety millilitres of water. Uh then you've got enough there for a lot of stabiliser. So now that the stabilising's finished, uh it's time to dry the film. So all I do uh for that is I take the reel out and I'll take this outside and just swish it about to get all the stabilizer off and and then what I'll do is I'll just check the film blow through it to make sure the strands or the film is not not touching itself in any places and then I'll just leave this to dry and now you can leave it on a radiator to dry or in my case because it's summer and the heating's not on uh, I just leave it I just leave it hanging up and it takes absolutely ages 
because uh, I simply I don't have a drying frame or anything like that. Uh, but on a fan heater, if you're holding it over a fan heater, you can just twirl it and you'll just have to sit and do that for about 10 minutes and then it'll be completely dry. So now the film is hanging up to dry, it's only a short length, so um, it's not too difficult to hang it from the stairs. But as you can see, the images are a bit weak looking. Uh, they don't seem to have a lot of colour to them, but then again, I've, I've always found that it's just expired EXR stuff, so it may be alright. It doesn't seem too far off the results that I normally get, so maybe I could use that developer just a little bit longer. But I'll only be able to tell really when I actually scan it. So to scan the film I'll be using this modified projector and all I do is just basically put the camera in front like this and then zoom in on the film. Uh, the light source, I'm not using a tungsten light bulb anymore. I found that I'm getting pretty good results just using uh, an LED light source. Now this is actually the light source out of the Lomography smartphone film scanner. It's basically just the backlight out of an LCD. Uh, so if you can get a small LCD screen you can actually take the backlight out of it. And then you could probably use that instead. And it gives a nice even coverage. It's more even than what, what it was. And it doesn't seem to be messing up the colours too much at all. So... Maybe you don't really have to use a tungsten light source uh, for telecine machines. Uh, <clears throat> or what you could do is just send your film away to be scanned, but that is usually very expensive. Uh, in my case it was much cheaper just to build a machine to do it. Uh, rather than sending film off to be scanned all the time. Plus that's more time consuming. So the film has now been cleaned and Basically all I did was just run it through these rewinds and just use this sort of soft cloth to get any dust off it. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is scan this and the first video you're, you're about to see will be this reel of film and the one after that will be a whole 50 foot one I did a couple of weeks ago using the exact same techniques. So as you can see that turned out not too bad at all. So the way I've been working it is I've actually got two litres of developer that, were, that was made up, two of those um, RE4 sets that I showed you and I have them separated into two one litre glass bottles and every time I finish developing what I do is I pour both of them into a one, no, no in a two litre iron brew bottle that I've cleaned out properly then I just mix them together and pour them back out into their separate bottles again and that just sort of replenishes the developer and mixes it so those two litres of developer have done all of this film which you see here and yes all of this there must be about 300 feet here anyway so it's, it's done better than I expected so the next film you're going to see is this one, which was done just on a walk with the dogs, so that's 50 feet there, so uh, that one came out really good as well.